Hare Krishna to all the devotees. A very warm welcome to our program on Srimad Bhagavatam study in which we are studying uh, in detail about uh, the various verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. Right now we are studying chapter number 9 and at the moment we are on verse number 28th of this chapter. Uh, today we plan to complete uh, verse number uh, 43 till verse number 43. The title of this chapter, ninth chapter, is Passing of Bhishma Dev. Overall, this is our 26th class since we started. For Mangala Charan prayers, uh, is Anupama Mataji present with us at the moment today? Uh, no, I don't see Anupama Mataji. She was supposed to recite this Mangala Charan prayers. Anyone else can recite? I can do, Prabhu. Yes, I Rakhi. can do, Prabhu. Okay, maybe we give to Vrinda Vaneshwari Mataji. Okay. Yes, Thank Mataji, you. please. Okay. Om Asyana Kena Rambasya Jonam Jena Shalakaya Chakshurum Nela Tanvena Tasmai Shri Guru Venaha Shri Chaitanya Manodishtam Sathitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Dupa Tatamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavansha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahakrani Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Savadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha, Krishna Padam Sahagana, Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vakansha, He Krishna Saruna Sindho, Dina Bantu Jagatpate, Gopesho Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaskute Sapta Kanchan Gaurangi Dadhi Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhani Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalta Karu Pyasa, Sipa Sindhu Jaye Vaja, Patitana Napao Mithyo, Vaishnavetyo Namo Namaha, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadabhara, Vivasati Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, Mataji, thank you very much. Can you recite the next prayer also? Very nicely recited, very soulfully recited. Thank you. Please move to the next one. Yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. Narayanam namaskrityam naram chaiva narotamam devin saraswatim vyasam tato jayam mudiraye nashta prayeshu badreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shoke Bhakti Bhavati Naishriti Krishna Yavaku Devaya Devaki Nantanayacha 
ನಂದ ಗೋಪ ಕುಮಾರಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಓಕೆ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ಲಿ ಚಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ದ ರೀಕ್ಯಾಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ರೀಕ್ಯಾಪ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡನ್ ಬೈ ಅವರ್ ಮನೀಷ್ ಕುಲಕರ್ಣಿ ಪ್ರಭುಜಿ ಬಟ್ ಮನೀಷ್ ಕುಲಕರ್ಣಿಜಿ ಟುಡೆ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೈಡ್ ಅಟೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅನದರ್ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಇನ್ ಸಿಂಗಾಪುರ್ ಮನೀಷ್ ಜಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಶಿಪ್ ವಿತ್ ಸಮ್ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಿಂಗಾಪುರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಟ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿಸಿಟ್ ಟು ದ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಿಂಗಾಪುರ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸರ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಆಲ್ ದೋ ಸೆಂಡ್ ಮಿ ದ ಸಮರಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಆಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ವೋಂಟ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಝೂಲನ್ ಯಾತ್ರಾ ಫೆಸ್ಟಿವಲ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಇನ್ ಸಿಂಗಾಪುರ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎನ್ಕರೇಜ್ ಅದರ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ always mention that online satsang is not the replacement for on site satsang uh, devotees if they get opportunity for on site satsang they should very well uh, take advantage of on site satsang uh, they can always uh, go back to our classes because we are recording our classes so they can always do that so in that spirit i would really appreciate uh, manish prabhu's advancement uh, in his practice of bhakti uh he is associating more closely with the devotees uh, in singapore so which is very good and heartening to uh, to uh, to know so on behalf of manish ji i will present the summary of previous class uh where we discussed verse number 15th 16th and 17th of 9th chapter in this verse uh the background is that yudhishthir maharaj is feeling very very morose is lamenting that because of him lot many people died in the battle of kurukshetra and lord krishna arranges to uh, make yudhishthir maharaj visit bhishma dev who consoles yudhishthir maharaj that my dear yudhishthir maharaj it is not because of your past deeds past sins that it has happened you are dharma personified and it is not and on top of that you are actually devotee of lord krishna pure devotee of lord krishna so how is it possible that because of your sinful reaction something like this would happen it is only because of time that is happening and uh, this time factor actually here means it is will of the lord which is manifesting through you and that is why you had to go, go through all these tribulations all these difficulties you have to suffer them personally that is why this is happening so uh, prabhupad also explain in this purports that when these kind of difficulties come in the life of pure devotees one should understand that it is not because of these past karma of these pure devotees it is mainly because lord wanted to teach us teach the common people through his devotees so that is what we discussed in verse number 15th 16th and 17th <clears throat> then we discussed from verse number 18 to 24 where bhishma dev glorifies the position of lord shri krishna as the supreme personality as the param bhagwan uh, and the bhishma dev starts uh, with this glorification that he mentions that lord krishna is the inconceivable original personality of godhead he is the first narayan he is the first narayan first narayan means he is the uh, he is the, uh, the the ultimate personality of godhead krishna stu bhagwan swayam and is bewildering us with his self created energy and because it is mentioned that he is bewildering us with his self created energy so what it means is that we are not able to understand lord krishna ourselves but then who can understand so bhishma dev answers it bhishma dev says that only mahajan can know him who are these mahajans we discussed there are 12 mahajans and the mention of only three mahajans is mentioned in verse number 19 shiva narad and kapila then in verse 20 uh, bhishma dev mentions that uh, lord krishna uh, favors his unalloyed devotees favors his pure devotees how 
that he becomes servant of his pure devotees he does he does all kind of small menial services for the devotees he become their messenger he become their charioteer and so on but that does not changes his position he still remains the original supreme personality of god at krishna stu bhagwan swayam then in verse number 21st there are several qualities of lord krishna mentioned sarva atmanah which means he is omnipresent uh, samadrshah which means he is equal to everyone an ahankrate which means he does not have any ahankar he does not have any false ego and he is advyasya which is absolute like that several qualities of lord krishna were glorified by bhishma dev then bhishma dev mentions that lord is merciful to his dedicated devotees and that is why he has personally come to give his darshan while bhishma dev is ending his life bhishma dev had this boon of ichcha mrityu he could pass away he could leave his body any time when he would desire by the grace of his father illustrious father shantanu he got this boon and then in verse 23 he mentions that one whose mind is absorbed in krishna with devotion and who joins uh, the name holy name of the lord is released from the bondage so because he mentioned this particular verse because somebody might say that you are very fortunate that the lord is personally present before you that is why you will actually be liberated then bhishma dev clarifies no it is not that uh, a requirement that lord personally be present before me lord can actually be present in someone's mind through his sound also through his holy name also so anyone who chants the holy name of the lord can be released from the bondage of karma then in the 24th verse bhishma dev desired and prayed that his mind be absorbed uh, in thinking of the lord while he is leaving his body then from 25th to 28th verse bhishma dev instructs maharaj yudhishthir and we covered first three verses of this series in 25th verse maharaj yudhishthir asks about the principles of various religious duties uh, what is the, what are various dharmas uh, that is what maharaj yudhishthir asks in verse number 26 bhishma dev explains yudhishthir maharaj about the varnashram system in the varnashram system he explains about the duties of ashatriya vaishya brahmana and shudra and then he mentions that all these duties are actually meant for gradual elevation gradual elevation means uh, if we follow the varnashram duties we will purify ourselves and we will move closer to the lord and ultimate purpose of this varnashram is to ultimately reach the supreme lord and that we have discussed in previous chapters of bhagavatam then in the last verse of the previous class that is the 27th verse bhishma dev also explained the dana dharma dana dharma means duties of charity raj dharma raj dharma means the duty of a king and uh, moksha dharma duties how to attain liberation and then stri dharma duties of a woman and then bhagavat dharma bhagavat dharma means what are the uh, duties to be performed in bhakti yoga in brief and in detail like that uh, uh, in the in the previous class we discussed some of these topics where uh yudhishthir maharaj uh, bhishma dev consoles yudhishthir maharaj then he glorifies lord krishna and then he instructs maharaj yudhishthir in the various dharmas now we will move to the fresh subject matter of the class today which is uh we will continue with the 28th verse uh, complete the final verse of this uh, particular uh, theme bhishma instructs yudhishthir and then there are three verses about bhishma dev's final moments and then 32nd to 43rd bhishma dev's prayers to the lord krishna are described so primarily the highlight of the class today will be the bhishma stuti the prayers that bhishma dev offers to lord shri krishna at his final moment so can i request for volunteers in today's class who would like to read the uh, read the text and also possibly the verses <clears throat> who can volunteer i will do first so rakesh ji vrindavaneshwari mata ji and I can, anyone i can also do okay so jeevan prabhu also is ready let me just vrindavaneshwari mata ji rakesh ji and jeevan i will also do who is that vanaja mata ji okay okay mata ji we'll give you the opportunity also let me write the name so that i don't forget uh jeevan prabhu rakesh ji 
वृंदावनेश्वरी माता जी एंड वनजा माता जी ओके जी ठीक सो वी विल फर्स्ट गिव अपॉर्चुनिटी टू वृंदावनेश्वरी माता जी माता जी कैन यू प्लीज प्लीज रीड द टेक्स्ट ऑन योर स्क्रीन धर्म अर्थ काम एंड मोक्ष Sai Chen instances from history, for he was himself well acquainted with the truth. Okay, so like in we discussed in the summary of the class, Bhishma Dev, uh, Bhishma Dev is has already described various types of dharmas uh, to Maharaj Yudhishthir, and now in the twenty eighth verse we get this description that Bhishma Dev not only explained the various dharmas. but also cited stories and instances from the history from the puranas uh, to uh, further elaborate on those points uh, that he mentioned to yudhishthir maharaj regarding various dharmas so for example if he explained about bhakti dharma or bhagavat dharma then he supported that narration of bhagavat dharma with a story from purana uh, he might have given some story from the purana which further Uh, underscores further elaborates further explains and elaborates that point of bhagavad dharma so that is what bhishma dev did uh, to yudhishthir maharaj and shila prabhupad uh, made a very nice point in his purport about this particular point uh, vanaja mata ji can you kindly mute yourself uh, probably you are getting unmuted and that is creating some noise in the class background noise yeah thank you mata ji thanks a lot okay so vrindavaneshwari mata ji kindly read this paragraph yeah you you need to unmute yourself yeah now you can read yes incidents in vedic <laughs> literature are factual historical narrations incidents mentioned in the vedic literature such as puranas mahabharat and ramayana are factual historical narrations that took place sometimes in the past although not in any chronological order such historical facts being instructive for ordinary men were exalted without chronological reference besides that they happen on different planets nay in different universes and thus the description of the narrations is sometimes measured by three dimensions we are simply concerned with the instructive lessons of such incidents even though they are not in order of any limited range of understanding hmm. so this is a very important point uh, this is very important mainly because it actually solidifies our faith why it is solidifies our faith because right from the childhood we have been told that these are mythological stories mythological stories means some myth uh, something to do with myth uh, they may not be they are not factual they are not actually historical they are myth they are mythological stories that's how we study in our classes that's how we study in uh, that's how the media also portrays Uh, about these books like rama and mahabharat shrimad bhagavatam that these are mythological stories here prabhupad is very emphasizing this very fact that these are not mythological stories rather these are factual historical narrations that took place sometimes in the past although they may not be in a chronological order uh, and then they are very instructive for ordinary men and that is why they were assorted assorted means they were collected compiled and then he makes another point that they happen on different planets eh? and then different universes so one is our own planet earth then there are other planets like maybe uh, uh, higher planets or lower planets whatever it may be other than earth planet within the same universe and then it could be a story that may have occurred in another universe so we have our own universe but then there is another brahmand we have our brahmand then there is another brahmand where the story might have happened so these stories are collected from these three dimensions so this is where he mentions here uh, 
sometimes measured by three dimensions so these are 3d stories huh? 3d story means uh, either they could have happened our at our own planet earth it could have happened at some another planet but in the same universe and but then it could also have happened in another universe so these are three dimensional stories but they are very instructive they are very uh, uh, the lessons learned in these stories are very th- very useful so we are simply concerned with the instructive lessons of such incidents so we are not bothered about other details for example sometimes the details like uh, maharaj dasharath was 60000 years old or the battle between gajendra and the crocodile took place for thousands of years so we may get bewildered by such accounts but as we have men- at prabhupad is mentioning that these are stories sometimes from other universes also where time factor might have been different so he is saying that we are simply concerned with the instructive lessons of such incidents even though they are not in order by our limited range of understanding so this is a very very important point we should not forget that these are historical accounts meant for giving instructions to us and very useful and very powerful stories okay next mata ji please <clears throat> why bhishma dev was describing occupational duties the sun's course ran into the northern hemisphere this period is desired by mystics who buy at their will hmm. so now the time has come uh, bhishma dev while he was giving instruction to yudhishthir maharaj various dharmas etc etc then the sun actually came to uttarayan and this is what is mentioned here as northern hemisphere this period is described desired by mystics who die at their will so if you remember in the chapter number 8 of bhagavad gita where lord krishna describes that if a particular yogi uh, leaves his body at this particular time then he goes uh, to a very higher destination then he gets liberation similarly uh, bhishma dev was also a yogi he was a yogi because he had this a boon of ichcha mrityu he could leave his body at his will so he was a yogi in, in that sense then uh, that is what uh, is being mentioned this period is desired by mystics who die at their will here prabhupad has to say some very useful uh, words uh, in the purport mata ji can you please read journey to higher planets by yogis and sids yogis can also reach any planet within no time without a material vehicle the yogis can reach the highest planetary system within a very short time and this is impossible for the materialist even attempting to reach the highest planet will take millions of years at the speed of millions of miles per hour this is different science and bhishma dev knew well how to utilize it yes so this is the now these days this topic of uh, india landing their uh, chandrayaan their spaceship chandrayaan on the moon planet and there is a lot of uh, 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 lot of activity in the media about this particular news so this might be of some interest to the devotees in the class today so what prabhupad is saying here uh, first of all he mentions that bhishma dev was also a yogi because he could leave his body at will so yogis may get this siddhi uh, by the dint of their meditation uh, onto the parmatma situated in the heart they can purify themselves to the extent that they are now capable of leaving their body at their will similarly bhishma dev was also empowered with that siddhi but beside that siddhi there are other siddhis also and one of the siddhis prabhupad is mentioning here is yogi can also reach any planet within no time without a material vehicle so without a chandrayaan or without maybe apollo or without many any other material vehicle spaceship yogis can reach to other planets within no time the yogis can reach the highest planetary system within a very short time and this is impossible for materialist even attempting to reach such high planet will take millions of years at a speed of millions of miles per hour this is a different science this is a different science this is the science of yogas uh, yog siddhis and bhishma dev knew very well how to utilize it so the point is 
Prabhupada also has written this book called Easy Journey to Other Planets. And he has written this book uh, while he was uh, in, uh, in, the, in the beginning of his preaching mission to United States. He wrote this book, Easy Journey to Other Planets. In that book, he explained, because at those times, uh, America was sending their spaceship to moon and to different other places. And uh, Prabhupada, in order to catch the attention of the world, wrote this book where he mentioned that if you uh, perfect yourself in York Siddhis, actually you do not need all these sophisticated vehicles. You can go to the other planets very easily. So this is uh, also a very useful con uh, content in the purport by Prabhupada. Okay, now the next one, Mataji. Please read. Focus on Krishna. Thereupon, Bhishma, who spoke on thousands of subjects, and fought thousands of battles, withdrew his mind and focused on Lord Krishna, who stood before him, four-handed and dressed in yellow garments. Hmm. So Bhishma Dev now uh, is coming, to, his life is now coming to the end, and he completely now withdraws his attention from all other places, and now only one job, he just want to focus on Lord Krishna, who very mercifully, very kindly came before him to give his darshan at the time of the departure of his very dear devotee, Bhishma Dev. Prabhupada, uh, I've not taken any uh, excerpt from Prabhupada. Uh, or maybe I forgot to delete that slide. Yeah, now we move to the purport point. Yes. Bhishma Deva's extemporary departure. In the momentous hour of leaving his material body, Bhishma Deva set the glorious example concerning the important function of human form of life, the subject matter which attracts the dying man becomes the beginning of his next life. Therefore, if one is absorbed in thoughts of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, he is sure to go back to Godhead. Without any doubt. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, 8th chapter, 5th to 15th verse. Yes, so Prabhupada is praising and glorifying Bhishma Dev that at the time of his departure, he set up an example for all of us. And what is that example? That example is that at the time of our death, the most important duty uh, of the jiva is to remember Lord Krishna. And that is what Bhishma Dev is exhibiting here. And he also mentions, Prabhupada also mentions that at the time of death, whatever is our consciousness is actually the beginning of our next life. So if in the at the time of our death, our consciousness is something materialistic, then in the beginning of our next life, we are going to get a materialistic birth. But if we are completely spiritual, then our next life will be spiritual. We will get a spiritual body and we will be together with the be, be, be together with the Lord in the spiritual world. So that is what Prabhupada is mentioning. Okay. Yes, Mataji. Next one. Bhishma Deva's final moments. By pure meditation on Lord Krishna, he was freed from all inauspiciousness and bodily pains caused by arrow wounds. All the external activities of his senses stopped and he prayed to the prayed. he prayed yeah. to the lord he prayed to the lord so there is a spelling mistake here he is not paying to the lord there is no payment being done here it is praying to the lord huh? so uh, in this verse what is being mentioned that because now his consciousness is completely spiritualized uh, why because lord krishna is personally present before him he forgot all his bodily pains so uh, in order to explain this point in detail, Prabhupada writes this in the in the purport. Mataji, please read. <clears throat> Krishna's son, Maya is darkness. The material body is a gift of material energy, technically technically called as Maya or illusion. Identification with the material body is due to forgetfulness of our eternal relationship with the Lord. For a pure devotee of the Lord, like Bhishma Deva, this illusion was at once removed as soon as the Lord arrived. 
Lord Krishna is like the sun, and the illusory external material energy is like darkness. In the presence of the sun, there is no possibility that darkness can stand. Hmm. Here, the first line is very important. The material body is a gift of the material energy, technically called illusion or Maya. So, the body that we have, it is Maya. Maya means which is not spiritual, which is uh, uh, different from the spiritual energy. That is why this body is called as Maya. Maya means Maya. Ma means not. Ya means spiritual. One which is the, one that is not spiritual, one that is not something to related with Lord Krishna. It is the material body that is known as Maya. And identification with the material body is due to forgetfulness of our eternal relationship with the Lord. But for a pure devotee like Lord Bhishma Dev, there was no Maya. There was no illusion. This illusion was at once removed as soon as the Lord arrived. And uh, that is what Lord uh, Prabhupada is mentioning here. Whenever there is Krishna present in our life, then there is no place for Maya. So material and spiritual cannot go together. If we think that we can be materialistic in consciousness and spiritualist in consciousness at the same time, that is not possible. Either we can be spiritualist or we can be materialist. And if we are trying to become spiritualist, we are trying to bring Krishna in our life, then for sure the materialist consciousness will actually go away. And that is what Prabhupada is saying. Krishna is like sun and Maya is like darkness. Whenever there is Krishna, whenever there is sun, then there is no question of darkness. So if spiritual energy is present in our life, then we are bound to move away from the material energy. Okay. Now we move to uh, the next section or the highlight of the class today, which is the Bhishma Stuti. So Bhishma Dev's prayers unto the Lord. And these prayers are being uh, recited by Bhishma Dev in a very special meter. I'm still checking with other devotees what is the name of this meter. But the speciality of this meter is that if there are four lines in these meters, one, two, three, four, the first line has got 12 syllables. The second line has got 13 syllables. The third line has got 12 syllables. And the fourth line has got 13 syllables. So 12, 13, 12, 13. That is how it is mentioned. That is how I notice in this meter. And it, this meter is sung in a particular melody. And I will try to sing this uh, prayer in that particular melody. Uh, Vrindavaneshwari Mataji, if you can uh, uh, recite that mm -hmm. together with me. Uh, that would be good yeah. if not that is also not not a uh, uh, i mean that is also okay not no problem so iti mati rupa kalpita vitreshna iti mati rupa kalpita vitreshna bhagavati satvata Pungave Vibhumni Bhagavati Sasata Pungave Vibhumni Swasukhama Upagate Kvachid Vihartum Swasukhama Upagate Prakrati mupe yushi yad bhava prabaha Prakrati mupe yushi yad bhava prabaha yad bhava Prabhaha. Okay. Okay. So this is the this is how this meter is sung. I am still able to uh, not able to locate what is the name of this meter. I am trying to check with some of the devotees, but this is how it has been sung. And there are several YouTube videos where you can Google and find how the Bhishma Stuti has been sung. So this is this is the way now. We will try to sing this, uh, the whole Bhishma Stuti uh, like this in the class today. But 
coming back to the meaning of this verse here bhishma dev is saying let me now invest myself in krishna let me now completely dedicate my mind to lord krishna iti matir upakalpita vitrishna let me invest my thinking feeling and willing bhagavati satvata pungave vibhumni satvata punge satvata punge means uh, uh, the leader of devotees bhagavati is here being referred to a lord krishna who is satvata punge satvata pungave means leader of devotees and who is also self satisfied so let me invest my thinking in the all powerful all powerful is vibhumni all powerful self satisfied lord krishna who is the leader of devotees and then one more uh, few more qualities of lord krishna swa sukham upagate kwachid vihartum swa sukham upagate kwachid vihartum prakriti mupe yushi yad bhava prabaha like that huh? so swa sukham he was self satisfied upagate kwachid vihartum vihartum means he had come down uh, to this material world prakritim upayeshu yad bhava prabaha yad bhava prabaha means bhava means this material world prabaha means the flow of life in the material world so swa sukham who sometimes enjoys past times by descending into his own creation so what bhishma dev is trying to say for lord krishna is that lord krishna descend to this material world mainly to enjoy his own leela uh, the lord comes here to perform the leela why he performs this leela he performs this leela for the pleasure of his pure devotees uh, and then when he performs this leela for his pleasure of the pure devotees he also enjoys that leela himself in the company in the association of pure devotees so this is the meaning of the verse now please kindly read from here Yeah, there are two bullet points. Yes. Hmm. Bhishma Dev invest all powers of thinking in Lord Krishna because Bhishma Dev was a statesman, the head of Kuru dynasty, a great general, and the leader of Kshatriyas. His mind was thrown over so many subjects, and his thinking, feeling, and willing were engaged in different matters. now in order to achieve pure devotional service he wanted to invest all powers of thinking feeling and willing entirely in the supreme being lord krishna yeah so what prabhupad is writing here is that Pro- bhishma dev was not an ordinary person he was a royal person he had lot of duties in his life uh, he, he his mind would be engaged in so many other things like we just saw he was instructing he was instructing yudhishthir maharaj he was uh, reciprocating with the guests that had come there and doing many many things but now at the moment at this very important juncture of his life he completely want to invest all his thinking in lord krishna okay mataji please read the second one lord enjoys the association of his pure devotees he is leader of all living beings as the king of the state rules both the prisoners and the free citizens <clears throat> but his dealings are different in terms of devotees and non devotees non devotees never care to take any instructions from the lord and therefore the lord is silent in their case for devotees the lord desires their association and for them only the lord descends to the earth and in levels then hmm so this is lord has two type of behavior with two different type of people although he is equal to everyone uh, as parmatma he is equal to everyone he is situated in everyone's heart as parmatma and as parmatma he is watching everyone's activities uh, and then giving them the reaction of all these activities he is doing all that and that is where he is equal to everyone but for devotees he is reciprocating in a different way he is uh, he is for devotees he is not acting as parmatma rather he is acting as bhagwan and uh, in the bhagwan form he is providing the devotees his association and also taking the association of the devotees and in the association of the devotees he enjoys very much huh? for devotees the lord desire their association and for them only the lord descends to the earth and and lives them 
so that is why he is mentioned here as the leader of all the living beings he is satvata pungave satvata pungave means he is the leader of the devotees <clears throat> okay now we go to uh, our next uh, devotee uh, uh, jivan prabhu to kindly help me recite these uh, verses and read the texts so i will read one line tribhuvan kamanam tamalavarnam tribhuvan kam kamanam tamalavarnam ravi kar gaurav rambaram dadhane ravi kar gaurav rambaram dadane vapuralakakal vapuralakakula vrtananabjam vapuralakakula vrta anabaj ana anabjam vijaya sakherati rastume navadya विजय सके तुम्हें यस वेरी नाइस नाइस ट्राई ओके नाउ वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस वर्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द लास्ट लाइन व्हाट इज व्हाट इज भीष्म देव इज ट्राइंग टू से हेयर लेट मी हैव रति फॉर विजय सखा रति मींस प्रेम रति मींस प्योर डिवोशनल लव फॉर द लॉर्ड लेट मी हैव रति फॉर विजय सखा so krishna is asking in his mind to bhishma dev uh, in the previous verse bhishma dev says i want to focus my thoughts completely and solely in lord krishna here lord krishna is trying to ask in his mind to bhishma dev my dear devotee what are your what is the nature of your thoughts so bhishma dev is offering his thoughts in the form of this prayer he is saying let me have pure rati for vijay sakha vijay sakhe ratir astu me navadya vijay sakhe ratir so vijay sakha here means what vijay is the another name for arjuna so vijay sakha here means the friend of arjuna let me have pure rati pure devotion pure love pure pure prema for vijay sakha and and who is this vijay sakha the qualities of this vijay sakha is mentioned in these first three lines he is saying tribhuvana kamanam tribhuvana kamanam means whose body is desired by the three worlds tamal varnam tamal varnam means whose complexion is dark like the tamal tree and then ravi kar gaur varambaram dadhane and then ravi kar gauravara ravi kar ravi means sun ravi kar gauravara gaur is actually yellowish his glittering yellow cloths shine in the sun ravi kar gauravaram baram dadhane ambaram is actually clothes so who is this uh, vijay sakha the quality of this vijay sakha is that his yellow clothes shine in the sun now what uh, bhishma dev is an uh, understanding lord krishna he is perceiving lord krishna mainly in the form of partha sarthi who is partha sarthi partha sarthi means the chariot driver of arjuna in the battlefield of kurukshetra uh, uh, krishna performed this act, uh, krishna performed this role of the chariot driver of arjuna and that is what bhishma dev likes very much bhishma dev really relishes the sweetness of this Uh, act of lord krishna as partha sarthi and that is what uh, bhishma dev is referring here to uh, lord krishna he is his glittering yellow clothes shine in the sun because when this battle of kurukshetra was going on the chariot driver lord krishna was facing lord bhishma uh, facing bhishma dev and bhishma dev was always having this darshan of lord krishna with his yellow garments and the battlefield took place the battle took place in the in the daylight so the sun was reflecting was uh, was was putting his rays on the on the yellow dhoti of lord krishna and the reflection from the yellow dhoti of lord krishna was shining very nicely it was giving lot of 
reflections and that is what bhishma dev is relishing this sweetness very very much at this moment so he's that is why he's saying his glittering yellow clothes shine in the sun and then he says vapur alaka kulavrata anabjam and his lotus face is covered with paintings of sandalwood pulp and there would be some decoration on the lotus face of lord krishna with the sandalwood pulp so this is these are the thoughts of bhishma dev at the time of the departure he is remembering lord krishna in a very beautiful form as parth sarthi wearing yellow dhoti which reflects sunlight in a very beautiful way and his lotus face is covered with paintings of sandalwood pulp yes prabhu please read why bhishma deva calls lord krishna as a vijay saka arjuna was always the conqueror of conqueror because the lord was his friend bhishma deva takes this opportunity to address the lord Who are really who are related with him in different transcendental humors. Okay, so why Bhishma Dev calls Lord Krishna as Vijay Sakha? Because Arjuna was always a conqueror. Arjuna never lost, and he was a friend of Lord Krishna. So that is one reason why Bhishma Dev called Lord Krishna as Vijay Sakha. He is the Sakha. He is the friend of Arjuna, and uh, the second reason is because Lord find it very nice. Lord is pleased when he is referred to by someone uh, in relation with his devotees. For example, Yashoda Nandan, Nanda Nandan, Partha Sarthi, and so on. So similarly, when the Lord is referred to as Vijay Sakha in relation to his very dear friend Arjuna, Lord is very very much pleased. That is why Bhishma Dev calls Lord Krishna as Vijay Sakha. Okay. Next one, Prabhu. <clears throat> Bhishma Dev is not able to forget. Lord's form as Partha Sarathi. While Krishna was eh, the charioteer of Arjuna, sun rays glittered on the dress of the Lord, and the beautiful hue created by the reflection of such rays was never forgotten by Bhishma Deva. As a great fighter, he was relishing the relation of Krishna in the chivalrous humor. Rasa, transcendental relation with the Lord in any one of the different rasas is relishable by the respective devotees in the highest ecstasy so bhishma dev is not able to forget lord's form as parth sarthi as i mentioned to you he was really enjoying the sweet form of lord krishna as the chariot driver of partha as the chariot driver of arjuna and bhishma dev in particular was enjoying the relationship with uh lord krishna in the form of veeraras veeraras means shivalry shivalry so lord krishna enjoys the relationship with different devotees in different rasas like with radharani he enjoys his relationship in madhurya rasa similarly he enjoys his relationship with arjuna as a friend as as uh, as sakha in in friendship rasa but with bhishma dev who later we will understand that who is in the dasya rasa and dasya bhav but he was enjoying this relationship with bhishma dev in in shivalras in in veer rasa lord like us also likes to fight sometimes uh, also likes to fight sometimes and when lord because sometimes we see that we we take pleasure in fighting now we see there are lot of sports like like wrestling like judo karate etc fencing etc why do human being actually enjoy these uh, these sports because there is there is there is joy in these sports and since we are also part and parcel of the lord actually all these desires all these i would say rasas all these taste for different different uh, rasas is already there in the lord so the lord also want to enjoy veer ras and for that uh, bhishma dev is the devotee with whom the lord enjoys veer ras so transcendental relation with the lord in any one of the different rasas is relishable by the respective devotees in highest ecstasy so like we when we when we th- when we throw flowers uh, when we offer flowers in abhishek on the lord 
we we get some bliss we get some joy we we really enjoy that moment when we offer flowers petals in abhishek in 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 on the lord or when we offer charanamrit or we when we offer uh, the juices the the honey the milk the water etc etc uh, we also enjoy that uh, but bhishma dev is enjoying by throwing arrows at lord krishna so that is what chivalry the rasa in veer rasa that is what it means here okay next one prabhu so this is 34th huh? now here uh, bhishma dev gives more details in the previous verse he gave some details how he enjoys that uh, veer ras with lord krishna here he gives some more details yudhi turagarajo vidhum raveshwa yuzi turagarajo vidhum raveshwa kachalulita shram varyalam kratase kachalulita shram varyalam kratase Uh, you need some practice bro <laughs> don't worry uh, i'll send you the video uh, okay. where the uh, where these prayers are there so you can practice with that video it is it is not so easy i can understand i can realize but thanks for your thanks for your effort mama nishita sharair vidhidyamana mama nishita sharai vidhidyamana लेटर आत्मा like this okay okay very nice okay. so we will uh, you, you please try in in your personal time with this it's a very sweet uh, melody so okay, okay now now the meaning here is yudhi turga rajo vidhumra vishwak turga means horse rajo means the dust and vidhumra means in the battlefield yudhi actually means the battlefield so in the battlefield there is very high action drama is going on the horses are running here and there the soldiers are uh, running here and there and so on and that is causing rajo that is causing the dust huh? rising up like like, uh, like uh, the dust is rising up and this dust what it is doing this dust is covering the face of the lord kacha lulita vishwak kacha lulita so here kacha means uh, the the hair uh, so it is covering the dust which is rising it is actually covering the hair of the lord so the lord's hair are become very dusty and then shrama vari alankritasya shrama shrama vari so shrama vari means the sweat the so in the battlefield where the lord is doing lot of effort to make arjuna victorious to protect arjuna now from the arrows of bhishma dev he has to do a lot of effort and that is causing sweat to appear on the face of the lord so this dust in his hair and the sweat on the face of the lord is 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 looking very very beautiful so this is the veer ras although the dust and the sweat is not a form of a beauty but in the veer ras when the bhishma dev observes lord krishna he finds this very very beautiful the lord is doing lot of effort his hair is covered with the dust from the battlefield his his face is covered with the sweat because he is trying hard to protect arjuna and then mama nishita sharair vidhi vibhidyamana 
and when his skin was wounded by my sharp arrows he enjoyed it uh, when when bhishma dev was throwing arrows because uh, lord was the driver of uh, arjuna and in the battlefield when the arrows are thrown at the at the warrior who is arjuna here some of the arrows also come to the driver uh, so it is that the driver is not escape driver actually sitting in front of the in the in the front of the chariot so lord krishna also got wounded by some of the sharp arrows of bhishma dev and when he got wounded with those sharp arrows lord krishna actually enjoyed those sharp arrows very much those wounds those piercing of the arrows he enjoyed very much and then what bhishma dev is saying let my mind go to that lord krishna who is in the armor in the battlefield kavache astu krishna atma so he is now offering his obeisances his prayer is praying that my mind actually go to that krishna whose hair are covered with dust whose face is wetted with sweat and whose skin is wounded by my sharp arrows and he is enjoying that sharp arrows let my mind go to that krishna who's wearing an armor who's wearing that kavacha in the in the battlefield of kurukshetra <clears throat> now some very beautiful explanations yes prabhu please read vishwa deva praise the all merciful nature of the lord vishwa deva appreciated the all merciful attitude of the lord because he did not uh, leave arjuna alone although he was uh, disturbed by the sharpened arrows of vishwa deva nor was he reluctant to come before bishma's uh, death bed even though he was uh, ill treated by him on the battlefield bishma's uh, repentance and the lord's merciful attitude are both unique in this picture yeah so here all merciful nature of the lord is mentioned why what are the two aspects of lord merciful nature one is that he did not leave arjuna alone in the battlefield uh, although bishma dev was fighting very ferociously he was still protecting arjuna with all his effort and then uh, another thing is he still came before bishma deva at the time of his death although bishma dev was piercing lord krishna's body with arrows so uh, to a mundane eye it might seem that bishma deva is enemy of lord krishna but no bishma deva is one of the greatest devotee of lord krishna and lord krishna also loves bishma deva so much so bishma deva although he was fighting arrows uh, throwing arrows at lord krishna but lord krishna out of his merciful nature still came out of his mercy to give darshan to bishma dev so this is the all merciful nature of the lord yeah next one prabhu bishma deva's arrows are like roses she bishma deva is a great devotee of the lord in the relation of servitorship thus his throwing of sharp arrows at the transcendental body of the lord He is as good as the worship of another devotee who throws a soft roses upon him yes so sometimes when we have a desire to fight we may ask our one of our servants we may have maybe few servants in our home and one of the servants who is maybe a little more well built and we want to enjoy the uh, the the rasa of fighting the rasa of chivalry we can ask that servant okay uh, so and so please come and let us have some kushti let us have some wrestling similarly uh, bhishma dev is who is in the mood of servitorship who is in the dasya bhav he is enjoying uh, the 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 worship the devotion of the lord krishna by throwing arrows at the lord so this is what uh, uh, prabhupada is writing here and then another very beautiful and uh, full of rasa another analogy is given here yeah <clears throat> bhishma dev was there Or, uh, or similar to the biting of a uh, fiancé, Sheila, fiancé. She was the other chakra of the Thakura, a great acharya and devotee in the in the humor of a conjugal love with the Lord. Remarked very saliently in this regard. He says that the wounds uh, created on the body of the Lord. by the sharpened arrows of bhishma deva were as pleasing to the lord as the biting of a fiance who bites the lord's body directed by a strong sense of a sex desire such a biting by the opposite sex is never taken as a sign of enmity even if there is a wound on the body yes so here uh, 
uh, in the madhurya ras uh, shila vishwanath chakravarti thakur is presenting one more analogy it is like something between a lover uh, uh, a lover between the two lovers huh? like a man and a woman they are making love with each other and in that activity if the if the fiance bites the body of the lover then the lover doesn't think that the that the biting is out of enmity it is actually uh, he relishes all that uh, biting of the of the of the fiance similarly bhishma dev arrows are piercing lord krishna's body and but lord krishna is enjoying those kind of piercing like the fiance enjoys the uh, the biting of the lover so that is a very uh, an analogy given full of rasa by shila vishwana chakravarti thakur okay now we go to the next section and i would like to invite now rakesh ji for for the reading and recitation rakesh ji are you there yes prabhu okay so don't worry if you are not able to sing the second line <laughs> uh, but uh, if you try it then that should be good enough sapadi sakhi vacho nishamya madhe sapadi sakhi vacho nishamya madhe निज पर योर बल यो रथम निवेश निज पर योर बल यो रथम निवेश वेरी नाइस अटेम्प्ट ओके स्थितवती पर से निकायु रक्षण स्थितवती पर हृतवती पार्थ सखेरतीर ममास्तु हृतवती पार्थ सखे रतिर ममास्तु या ओके थैंक यू Sapadi sakhi vacho nishamya madhe. So here in this verse, addresses Krishna as Parth Saka. Parth Saka means uh, the the friend of Arjuna, like Vijay Saka. So in obedience to Arjuna's command, sapadi sakhi vacho. Sakhi vacho means uh, the the command of the the friend. Sapadi in order to fulfill the command of the friend. Nishamya madhe. Nishamya madhe means. Shri Krishna placed the chariot between the two armies. So in Bhagavad Gita, we find this verse in the very first chapter, where Arjuna instructs uh, Arj uh, Krishna, his chariot driver, that O oh, Krishna, kindly take my chariot in between the two armies so that I can nirikshan, I can do examination of the armies of the opposite side, like that. So nishamya madhe. So sapadi sakhi vacho nisham me madhe. In obedience to Arjuna's command, Sri Krishna placed the chariot between the two armies. Then what happens? And sthita sthita vati parase nikayu rakshna hrita vati partha sakhe rati mamastu. What does this mean? Sthita vati par seinikayu rakshna. and while there he shortened the life spans of the opposite party by his merciful glance so sthitavati sthitavati means while situated in the middle of the two armies para sainik para sainik means the sainik of the other side para sainik parae para sainik the soldiers of the other side ayur akshana akshana means by glancing those uh, glancing those soldiers hritavati hritavati means he shortened the life shortened the life span of the soldiers of the opposite party so let my mind be fixed upon that krishna who is the friend of partha so this is how bhishma dev is praying in this particular verse please read from here bhai bhishma deva address the lord as parth sakha the lord being the supreme living being is never the order supplier of any one whoever he may be but out of his causeless mercy and affection for his pure devotees sometimes he carries out the order of the devotee like an awaiting servant by executing the order of a devotee the lord becomes pleased 
as a father is pleased to carry out the order of his small child this is possible only out of pure transcendental love he therefore addressed the lord as the friend of arjuna yeah so it is once again the bhaktavatsal nature huh, where the lord actually becomes even agrees to become a subordinate although he never carries order supply he is not an order supplier of anyone he doesn't take orders from anyone he is the supreme lord why what is the need for taking him orders but he takes orders uh, from his devotees out of pure transcendental love uh, that is why he is mentioned here as parth sakha okay next one was lord partial to arjun because he shortened the life span of opposition hmm. his diminishing the duration of life of arjuna's enemy does not mean that he was partial to the cause of arjuna factually he was merciful to the opposite party because they would not have attained salvation by dying at home in the ordinary course of life yes so what happens is when lord krishna glanced to the soldiers of opposite party so what was the benefit those people also attained liberation when they died in the battlefield of kurukshetra so it was not sometimes uh, people say that in the battlefield of kurukshetra it was mass murder it was mass it was a massacre but it was not a massacre it was mass liberation exercise why it was mass liberation exercise because the people who were dying in the battlefield of kurukshetra had lord krishna directly in front of him present before them and when they were dying they were directly having darshan of the lord and immediately they were getting liberated so they were not being partial the lord was not being partial to arjuna when it is mentioned that he shortened the life span of the other side actually he made this possible that all of them would got liberation at the time of their death had they were not present in the battlefield and had they died at their home then they would not have got that opportunity for liberation so lord krishna is all good he is all good he doesn't not have anything bad in him and that is what is being mentioned in this bullet point please read prabhu the lord does no wrong in any circumstance because he is absolute all good at all times all good at all times even if he touches a asura a demon whatever he does if he kills ravan he kills putana he kills uh, 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 any other demon the demon is bound to get liberated he is all good he cannot do anything wrong that is what our lord is okay vyavahita pratana mukham nireeksha vyavahita pratana mukham nireeksha स्वजन वधा दोष बोध्या स्वजन वधाद आत्म विद्यायाश कुमतिम अहरद आत्म विदयायस चरणरति पर मेस्तु चरणरति पर मेस्तु यस थैंक यू प्रभु व्यवहिता प्रतना मुखम निरीक्षा एंड देन ही प्रेज फॉर द चरण रति ऑफ द लॉर्ड चरण चरण रति मीन्स द लव फॉर द lotus feet of the lord he is saying when arjuna was seemingly polluted by ignorance upon observing the soldiers before him on the battlefield pratana means the soldiers vyavahita pratana mukhum niriksha swajana vadhad vimukhasya dosha buddhaya swajana swajana means his own relative vadhad killing of his own relatives vimukhasya vimukhasya means he became averse he became against the killing of his relative by because of dosh buddhaya dosh buddhaya means because some karpanya dosh karpanya dosho pahata swabhava uh, 2.7 bhagavad gita because of this karpanya dosh because of this kripanata uh, arjuna became uh, against killing of his own relatives uh, then what happened then in order to remove that dosh buddhaya kumatim aharad 
kumatim that kumati that arjuna actually acquired uh, in order to remove that kumatim atma vidyayash then lord krishna gave him the knowledge of atma vidya the knowledge of atma the knowledge of parmatma and that transcendental knowledge that divya gyan lord krishna gave to arjuna and then to such a lord to may uh, to such a lord may i have the uh, may i have rati in the lotus feet of such a lord may his lotus feet always remain the object of my attraction so this is how bhishma dev is praying in this 36 verse please read from here prabhu bhai bhagavad gita was spoken by lord krishna apparently arjuna's intelligence became polluted because otherwise there would not have been a chance to deliver the teachings of bhagavad gita for the good of all polluted conditioned souls engaged in material bondage by the conception of the false material body the bhagavad gita was delivered to the conditioned souls of the world to deliver them from the wrong conception of identifying the body with the soul and to reestablish the soul's eternal relation with the supreme lord yeah so why was bhagavad gita spoken bhagavad gita was spoken mainly for us arjuna's bewilderment was lord's plan like we studied in the previous class he is adbhut karmana that was his plan to bewilder arjuna and through his bewilderment he actually he wanted to teach bhagavad gita to all of us that is why lord spoke bhagavad gita to arjuna okay <clears throat> now uh, we will in in the in the interest of time if you allow me maybe i can read the recitation of the verses on myself and then maybe you can continue to read the text is that is that okay prabhu right prabhu okay swani gama paha yamat pratigya ritam adhikartum va pluto rathasthah dhritarath charano abhyay chaladgu हरिवहतुमिभम गिस्ट दिस मीन स्व निगम अपहाय मत प्रतिज्ञा प्रतिज्ञा नाउ सेक्रीफाइज इज हिज ओन प्रॉमिस हेयर भीष्मेव इज ग्लोरिफाइंग लॉर्ड कृष्णा दट लॉर्ड कृष्णा सेक्रीफाइज हिज ओन प्रतिज्ञा टू कीप माय प्रतिज्ञा सो giving up his own promise swa nigamam swa nigamam apahaya his own nigam his own pratigya he gave up mat pratigyam for my pratigya he gave up his own promise to make uh, to uh, to to save my my vow to save my promise to save my pratigya and then uh, what did he do in order to save my pratigya and in order to give up his own pratigya ritam अधिकर्तुम अवप्लुतो रथस्थः रथस्थः मींस लॉर्ड एक्चुअली वाज सिचुएटेड ऑन द रथ एंड देन अवप्लुतो अवप्लुतो मींस ही केम डाउन एंड देन रितम अधिकर्तुम रितम अधिकर्तुम रितम अधिकर्तुम मींस ही एक्चुअली वाज सिचुएटेड इन द ऑन द चैरियट एंड ही क्विकली एक्चुअली गॉट डाउन देन व्हाट ही डिड धृता रथ चरणो ही टुक अ चैरियट व्हील एंड भयच chaladgur bhayach chaladgur means he ran very fast towards me and then he ran in such a way he came towards me in such a way ha harir iva hantum ibham gatottariya like a lion is coming to kill and elephant while the top cloth fell to the ground he approached to me in such a way ha like a lion is approaching to kill an elephant and while he was doing it his gatottariya gatottariya means his uh his garment of the uh, uh, is the top garment actually fell to the ground like you see here lord krishna is approaching bhishma dev and his garment is about to fall on the ground like that bhishma dev is now one more time uh, relishing the supremely sweet merciful nature of the lord that he gave up his own promise uh, in order to protect my own promise so there is a background story which prabhupad gives in the purport so the story is something like this that uh, duryodhan in the battlefield of kurukshetra when the pandavas were gaining victory when the pandavas hand was 
uh, much more powerful compared to the Kauravas. Kauravas were not able to make any uh, dent in the army of Pandavas. Then Duryodhan taunted at Bhishma Dev that it is only because you are affectionate towards Pandavas, uh, we are not able to win this battle. Uh, so Bhishma Dev, being a Kshatriya, found this taunting very, very uh, piercing. And he gave, Duryodhan, he gave Duryodhan five arrows. You take these five arrows. With these five arrows, I vow to kill Pandavas with these weapons tomorrow. And Duryodhan took those five arrows uh, from Bhishma. Uh, uh, and then what happened? Something happened where Arjuna, by trick, took those five arrows from Duryodhan. Now, how did that happen? It so happened in the past that once... Duryodhan was defeated by Gandharvas and the Gandharvas has captivated Duryodhan. At that moment of time, Arjuna saved Duryodhan from the Gandharvas. And Duryodhan, uh, out of his Kshatriya code of conduct, mentioned that I gave you this, uh, 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 I gave you this favor that in future you can ask me for any favor and I will oblige. I will be obliged to follow it. Now, this was the time when Arjuna went to the camp of Duryodhan and uh, reminded him of that particular instance and got those five arrows back from Duryodhan. And that is how uh, Duryodhan asked Arjun, how did you came to know about these five arrows? Then Arjun mentioned, Krishna actually told me. And then Duryodhan really felt uh, worried. Uh, how come Krishna come to know all these things uh, automatically? Huh? So then... Uh, he still had hope because Bhishma had vowed to kill Pandavas. And next day, Bhishma fought with great vigor. He fought with so much great vigor that Arjuna was almost about to be killed by Bhishma. At that very point, Krishna took up the wheel uh, and charged at Bhishma. So Krishna had vowed in the battlefield of Kurukshetra that he will not uh, that he will not raise any weapons. But that is why it is being mentioned here that Lord Krishna gave up his vow of not raising his own weapon. Rather, he protected Bhishma's vow that Bhishma vowed uh, previous day that I will make Krishna take weapon to protect Arjuna. And that is where Krishna uh, actually charged at Bhishma and uh, took up that weapon like the wheel of the chariot. <clears throat> okay. 38th. Shita Vishikahato Vishirnadamsha Shataja pari pluta atata ino me prasabhama abhisa ramada vadhartam sabhavatu me bhagavan gati mukunda. <clears throat> so, wounded by my sharp arrows, armor broken, Shita vishika hato. Uh, wounded by my sharp arrows. Hato means wounded. Vishirna damsha. Vishirna damsha means the armor of Lord Krishna was broken. <clears throat> shataja paripluta at taino me. And shataja paripluta. He was covered in blood. Lord Krishna was covered in blood. And at taino me. And Lord rushed towards me like an atatai. Like I was atatai to Lord Krishna. Uh, like I was an enemy to Lord Krishna. And how did he? ran towards Bhishma Dev, Prasabham Abhisa, in great anger, Mad Vadhartum, Mad Vadh, Vadh means killing, Mad means my, to, in order to kill me, Lord Krishna approached me very fast. That Lord Krishna, Sa Bhavatu Me Bhagavan Gatir Mukundaha, that Lord Krishna actually become uh, the destination of me, Mukunda. Mukunda means one who gives moksha to everyone. That is the name of Lord Krishna, Mukunda. So that Mukunda, that giver of the liberation actually become the object of my meditation. So this is the 38th verse. Yes, Prabhu. Please read. <clears throat> All spiritual body cannot be wounded. <clears throat> Bhishma Deva played the part of a valiant warrior and he purposely pierced the body of the Lord so that to the common eyes it appeared that the Lord was wounded. But factually, all this was to bewilder the non-devotees. Hmm. The all-spiritual body cannot be wounded and a devotee cannot become the enemy of the Lord. Yeah, the, both the things cannot be possible. 
the spiritual body of the lord cannot be wounded and the devotee cannot become the enemy of the lord so all this is going on to bewilder the non devotees so the blood that is coming out from the body of the lord krishna is again is a transcendental blood that is nothing to do with material blood this is all lord's leela because lord's body is not material body it is not made up of maya like us a lord body is completely pure completely transcendental so the wound and all these blood etc etc that is being mentioned here in the prayer this is all transcendental this is nothing to do with the materialistic description <clears throat> okay now i would request vanaja mata ji to join me in reading the text i will recite the verse vijaya rath kutum bhatatatotre धृतहय रश्मिताश्रिय क्षण भगवतीरतिरस्तु मे मुमूर्षोर्यम इह निरीक्ष हता विजय रथ कुटुंब आतोत्रे लॉर्ड प्रोटेक्टेड अर्जुना चैरियट while holding a whip in his right hand and then dhrat haya rashmini tat chriye kshaniye dhrat haya rashmini haya means horse rashmini means rope dhrata means holding so holding the ropes of the horses in his left hand and while i was observing all this it was very very beautiful i was observing the lord who was holding in his right hand uh, the whip and in the left hand the reins of the horses bhagavati ratir astu me mumur shor mumur shor means while i am desiring to die because lord bhishma dev had this ichha mrityu so he is mumur shor mumur shor means while i am desiring to die may i have rati for that lord bhagavati ratir astu me that rati be happen in my mind while i am desiring to die and then which lord yam iha niriksha hata gata swarupam who bestow liberation to those who died on the battlefield after seeing him so that is what bhishma dev is praying unto the lord that that parth sarthi who is holding the whip in his right hand the reins in the left hand and who gives liberation to anyone and everyone who is dying who is leaving his body in the battlefield of kurukshetra may my mind at this moment actually move towards him while i am desiring to die manaja mata ji kindly read from here the difference between a mystic and a devotee the mystic yogi tries to concentrate upon the super soul by controlling the senses from all other engagements and thus he ultimately attains samadhi a devotee more easily I think Samadhi by constantly remembering the Lord's personal future, along with His holy name, fame, pastime, etc. Therefore, the concentration of the mystic yogi and that of the devotee are not on the same level. The concentration of the mystic is mechanical, whereas that that of the pure devotee is natural, in pure love and spontaneous affection. yes so here is a difference between the how the mystic yogi achieve liberation and how the devotee achieves liberation so mystic yogi's process of achieving liberation is by controlling the senses it is very mechanical like we studied in dhyan yoga in sixth chapter of bhagavad gita the yogi has to go to the forest uh, control his senses practice pranayam practice yoga asanas and then find a suitable place control his mind control his senses like a lamp which does not waver and that is the process of liberation of a mystic yogi but for a devotee how does he achieve liberation the the devotee the bhakta achieve liberation by developing love by developing love for the lord that is how the the uh, the devotee actually attains samadhi the attains so here it is written here a devotee more easily attains samadhi by constantly remembering the lord's personal feature along with his holy name fame pastimes etc therefore the concentration of mystic yogi and that of the devotee are not on the same level however 
the concent the concentration of the mystic yogi is mechanical whereas that of the pure devotee is natural in pure love so we develop this love for the lord so this is our technique our technique is not artificially controlling our mind our technique is to feel love for the lord and for that we need to follow the activities of devotional principle activities of bhakti yoga what we studied in bhakti rasamrit sindhu so 64 limbs we studied so most of those limbs if we can try to inculcate in our own lives we will develop for sure we will develop natural pure love for the lord and that is sufficient for us to get samadhi okay lalita gati vilas valguhasa pranaya nirikshana kalpito rumana pratam anukratavat ya unmadandah prakriti magan kila yasya gopavadva so here now the 40th verse is something different something different hatke so far bhishma dev is praying Uh, is offering his prayers in the mood of worshiping lord krishna as parth sarthi so somebody may ask that you are saying uh, everything about arjuna uh, parth sakha vijay sakha uh, and like that every time you are mentioning to arjuna and you are mentioning the form of parth sarthi krishna so does that mean that arjuna is the topmost devotee so bhishma dev says no although arjuna is the great one of the greatest devotees arjuna is a very pure devotee of the lord but he is not the greatest then who is the greatest the greatest are the gopis of vrindavan and then he mentions what are the activities of gopis of the vrindavan lalita gati and then vilas valguhasa lalita gati means uh, lalita gati means when the lord will actually move uh, he'll walk then the gopis will really admire the walking of the lord then vilas valguhasa vilas valguhasa means emotional display uh, and then uh, pranay nirikshana pranay nirikshana means to observe the conjugal pastimes of the lord uh, 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 with the with the gopis then pranay nirikshana kalpito ru manah so gopis were worshiped by krishna's expert actions emotional display words and glances and then kritam anukrata vatya unmadandah attaining those qualities they responded in harmony to his most extraordinary display of love blinded by the madness of love and then prakritim agan kila yasya gopavadva how amazing that these gopis attained the nature of krishna himself so when the raslila happened Uh, so lord krishna would exhibit his uh, different different movements different different leelas to the to the to the gopis and when the ras leela happened in the ras leela uh, uh, in the in the ras leela lord at once uh, became uh, uh, disappeared and when the lord disappeared then how did gopi responded the gopis responded by enacting the same past times the same leela of the lord that he would walk in such a way he would uh, deal with us in such a way like that so what bhishma dev is saying that arjuna is a great devotee but arjuna was not treated by lord krishna at the same level at an equal level but with the gopis of vrindavan it was not like that gopis of vrindavan were the greatest and lord krishna actually dealt with the gopis of vrindavan at the same level there was no difference between the lords and and the gopis of the vrindavan so at this very moment when i am about to leave my body uh, let me also pray for the mercy of the gopis of the vrindavan so this is what uh, bhishma dev is at the moment praying for the gopis love he is mentioning gopis love is supreme actually he is trying to uh, he is trying to uh, present his own desire uh, that he also kind of attain the same position at the gopis of the vrindavan that is what he is mentioning in the verse number 40 so please read from here mata ji why bhishma deva remember the gopis the relations of the lord with arjuna is undoubtedly praiseworthy for the devotees like bhishma deva but the relations 
of the gopis with the lord is still more praiseworthy because of that still more purified loving service yes so But what it mentions is what it mentions is that the gopis were at the highest level were yes. at the more greater level at arjuna huh? yes. their love was even more pure although Ar arjuna's love is not impure but uh, still the gopis love was further uh, further more exalted than the arjuna's love okay next one by the grace of lord arjuna was fortunate enough to have the fraternal service of the lord as chariot driver but the lord did not award arjuna with equal strength the gopis however practically became one with the lord by attainment of equal footing with the lord yeah so here uh, prabhupad says that lord did not award arjuna with equal strength but it was not the case with gopis gopis practically became one with the lord by attainment of equal footing with the lord so the lord would treat gopis as if he was they were same as he was so he had that is why the relationship of gopis with lord krishna is the highest okay yeah krishna's aspiration to remember the gopis is a prayer to have their mercy also at the last stage of his life yeah so finally he is not only praying with lord but he is also praying with the greatest devotee of the lord the gopis uh, actually he is revealing kind of his own hidden ambition or his own uh, his own desire to achieve the same position as the gopis but then soon he realizes that it is too exalted not my cup of tea and then he kind of come back to the same original consciousness of a royal in the in the mood of veer ras in the mood of a royal person and then here he remembers the raj suya yagya of yudhishthir maharaj he prays he says muni gana nripavar ya sankulenta sadasi yudhishthira raj suya esham arahana mupape da ikshaniyo mama drishi gochar esh aviratma so what is saying at the raj suya yagya of yudhishthir maharaj there was the greatest assembly of all the elite men of the world the kings and the sages and in that great assembly shri krishna was worshiped by one and all as bhagwan arhanam upapeda ikshaniyo so all the who's and who's who all the greatest elitist uh, personalities of the world gathered in the raj suya yagya of yudhishthir maharaj so yaar raj suya yagya is that yudhishthir maharaj after winning the battle of mahabharat uh, did this raj suya yagya where he would leave a horse and wherever the horse would go uh, uh, in the region of maybe some other king then if the king would pick the horse if the king would uh, control the horse Uh, then he has to fight a battle with the uh, with the person who has released the horse in this case yudhishthir maharaj and if he allows the horse to pass through his region that means that the king has accepted the uh, kingship of the uh, of the yudhishthir maharaj so in the same raj suya yagya uh, greatest personalities the, the the greatest royal kings of the world had gathered and not only the kings but the greatest sages of the world also had gathered in that assembly in that assembly lord krishna was worshiped by all of them as supreme personality of god as bhagwan so he is remembering that particular site bhishma dev is particularly remembering that site that site is before me and i cannot forget it and i will always like to keep that site within me so this is what he remembers uh, at the raj suya yagya ceremony now in the 42nd verse which is the last verse of today's class he then prays he then uh, he then uh, recite this prayer tami mahamajam sharira bhajam hride hride dheshtitam atmakalpitanam pratidrisham eva nai adharakam ekam samad samadhi gato smita vidhut bheda moha what does it mean 
he's now saying misconception of duality is removed what is the misconception of duality means that i see lord krishna present before me someone thinks this krishna as brahman someone thinks this krishna is all pervading brahman he is spread everywhere and some other yogis think krishna as parmatma situated in the heart but now at the last moment of my uh, my passing away my departure i understand that what is being mentioned by brahman uh, by the nirvisheshas by the by the impersonalist by the yogis he is known as parmatma actually he is one only he is krishna only uh, he is no different uh, that brahman that parmatma actually is lord krishna only uh, now i can meditate with full concentration upon that one lord shri krishna now present before me uh, because now i have transcended the misconception of duality in regard to his presence in everyone's heart even in the heart of the mental speculators he is in everyone's heart the sun may be perceived differently but the sun is one like the sun the sun when he shines in the sky he he the sun casts a reflection in my eye the the sun may cast reflection in another person i also so somebody might think that there are different different suns but actually sun is one similarly lord krishna may be perceived as parmatma situated in everyone's heart by the yogis the same krishna may be perceived by all pervading effulgent brahman bright light by the by the impersonalist but actually now i know that there is no duality that the brahman the parmatma actually is none other than krishna alone he is krishna alone like the sun is one krishna is also one so that misconception of duality is now removed from my mind and then uh, prabhupad writes this in this purport yeah mata ji vasudeva is all in all in everything the misconception of the duality is completely removed from the mind of bhishma deva and he is now satisfied that it is lord sri krishna only who is all in all in everything this in enlightenment is attained by the great maha mahatmas or devotees as it is stated in bhagavad gita chapter 7 chapter 19 that vasudeva is all in all in everything and that there is no existence of everything anything without vasudeva vasudeva the lord krishna is the original supreme person as now confirmed by the maha Mahajana, and therefore both the neophytes and the pure devotees must try to follow in his footsteps. Yes, so Bhagavad Gita seven nineteen says, "Vasu Devam Sarvamiti Sa Mahatma Sa Durlabha." So Bhagavadam is in complete confirmation with Shri Mad Bhagavad Gita. So Bhagavad Gita says, "Vasu Devam Sarvamiti Sa Mahatma Sa Durlabha." So that Mahatma is very rare who understands. that vasudevam is actually the everything vasudevam is the cause of everything vasudevam actually is everything so similarly the parmatma aspect of the lord the impersonal brahman aspect of the lord actually is vasudev only actually it is krishna only actually the source of parmatma the source of brahman effulgence is krishna only so that is what vasudev is all in all in everything and this fact is being confirmed by no other than by mahajan uh, mahajan means the great exalted devotee of the lord so both the neophyte and the pure devotees must accept this fact because a mahajan is saying that vasudevam sarvamiti uh, there is no other uh, existence there is no other truth other than vasudev so this is what bhishma stuti is all about the so 11 glorious verses sung very melodiously in a very beautiful meter and such very intense and deep meanings about lord krishna so in order to appreciate these prayers by bhishma dev we need to understand the words of these prayers as much as possible so that when we sing these prayers those same feelings the same same emotion actually also emerge in our heart and we become closer and closer to the supreme lord and that is the perfection of our life so all glory to shrimad bhagavatam all glory to shila prabhupad Uh, any take away comments and question we can discuss now i will soon update this services for next class uh, yeah so i hope the class was interesting for the devotees any comments devotees might have maybe we can discuss now thank you very much
हरे कृष्णा यस करतार जी यस दंडवत यस प्रभु जी दंडवत सो डिवोशन इज एक्सपीरियंस्ड इन वेरियस डिग्रीज डिवोशन इज एक्सपीरियंस्ड इन वेरियस डिग्रीज एंड वन इज हायर देन दी अदर so that there are five rasas where the devotion is experienced by the devotees uh, which is shantaras dasyaras sakhyaras vatsalyaras and madhuryaras so even in madhuryaras also there is a swakiya and there is a parkiya so the gopis are in parkiya ras and the topmost gopi is shrimati radharani so ji. like this you can see yeah ji 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 please complete the yeah so that is what i'm trying to say that spiritual emotions are experienced in different different levels and you can say not only in bhakti even in other uh, like in karma yoga you will experience some purification you will experience some emotional de- spiritual purification emo- uh, spiritual uh, ecstasy then in gyan yoga then in in dhyan yoga then in bhakti yoga in bhakti yoga also five different rasas in five different rasas also in madhurya rasa also there are two different rasas in two different rasas also the 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 rasa experienced by radha rani is the topmost so this is how the whole gamut of rasas the gamut of spiritual emotions in in the in the spiritual life spread all across the vedic literature guruji there was another uh, question hmm. about the maya the way i knew ma means jo what is ya means is not there nahi hai yeah. i mean maya means no ma means is... not ma yeah. means not ya means that that means krishna uh-huh. that means krishna krishna or spiritual yeah maya guru ji guru ji maya means she is not there but we take it yeah we have to take it because we are in that position on, uh, at the moment so we have to accept it forcefully we have to accept it we are bound that is why we are known as conditioned souls but the jeeva ji 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 anyway i whatever i'm knowledge i had till now whatever <laughs> from gurus and all that i learned ma means what is yo means no ma not means there. not ma means not yeah तमसो मा ज्योतिर गमया तमसो मा ज्योतिर गमया जी लीव डार्कनेस मूव टुवर्ड्स लाइट तमसो मा मा मींस नॉट मा या मा मींस नॉट दैट नॉट कृष्णा नॉट स्पिरिचुअल दैट्स व्हाट माया मींस सो आवर आवर मटेरियल बॉडी इज माया जी आवर मटेरियल बॉडी इज नॉट स्पिरिचुअल दैट इज माया दैट इज व्हाट इट मींस या दो फिजिकल फाइव एलिमेंट्स एंड ऑल दैट करेक्ट thanks you thank you ji and uh, as usual excellent class thank you ji thank you very much okay bless you thank you so thank next you. Uh, next class service uh, summary services with jivan radha prabhu and uh, mangala charan prayers are with manaja mata ji so kindly be available for the service thank you very much okay any other question or comment maybe we uh take a last question or comment and then we close the session thank you hare krishna prabhu ji very nice class enjoyed it thoroughly okay thank you prabhu ji thank you very much i will share the i will share the melody version of the bhishma stuti it is available on youtube and you can enjoy it you can actually make the bhishma stuti recitation or recitation of kunti rani prayers in the morning Uh, when you do your puja when you do your spiritual practice you can take up this uh, uh, learn the melody and and then recite it it is very very purifying you really enjoy it one i i personally enjoy it very much yeah okay we shall try it yes prabhu ji thank you so, okay. all the vishnu sutis are in the same chandas same 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 
I don't okay. know the name of the chanda. I'm asking some no, some devotees. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will I will try to find it out, but it is in the same way, same meter. Okay. Okay. Very sweet. Very nice. You really, uh, you really like to sing it before the deities. You really enjoy it. Okay, so thank you very much for all the patient listening to the dear devotees, giving me opportunity to speak some of these wonderful uh, prayers uh, and and pastimes of uh, from Bhagavatam. Uh, thank you also to all those who helped me reciting and and uh, reading the text. Thank you everyone. Thank you very much. We will we will soon meet uh, next Sunday. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhu, there is a Wednesday in between. Oh, yeah, there is a Wednesday in between. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't yeah. forget. Sure. sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for Hindi, Hindi class, Hindi class, we'll meet on Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Ji, Ji, Guru Ji. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank because you. Because it means something missing when class <laughs> is not there. Okay. Thank you so, very much. Yeah. Thank you, Guruji. You are advancing, Prabhu. You are advancing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Guruji. Yes. All your mercy. <laughs> Prabhupada's mercy. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, that is, of course, ultimate. Sure. Okay. Is